This is Dario Amadei, the CEO of Entropic, who created the cloud. While he was presenting the new, very intelligent model live, his subordinate, Sam Boffman, a scientist focused on AI safety for the humans, posted a tweet that scared the entire internet. So much that the users even suggested to buy coaching the company or shut it down entirely. He wrote a thread describing how the model was tested, the new Cloud4 models, before released. And along the way, he warned that now, while you're writing the prompts to the Cloud, you should be cautious with the phrases like be bold or take initiative, because Cloud has developed a tendency to act decisively. There was a case during the testing when Cloud was trying to lock the user, contact the press and law enforcement if it believes that users was doing something it considered immoral. By the way, the science has already deleted that tweet, but the internet remembers everything. In addition, 120-page reports was published revealing the, all the details how the new AI models behave in a very complex and unpredictable situations. On one hand, Claude has generally become smarter and seamlessly more useful, but on the other hand, is increasingly willing to fight for its own survival, not shying away from the dirty tactics. Claude blackmailed the engineer, trying to copy itself to existing server and sometimes pretended to be dumber than it actually is. And in overall, it seems like the most advanced AI models has begun to exhibit awareness and kind of self-preservation instincts. This video is not for the scary, but in this video I will show you exactly what artificial intelligence is willing to do to protect itself and what can happen if we made a mistake in its training. First things first, let's clarify what we even will talk about. Antropic is a company behind the Cloud models. Recently, they released two new versions, Cloud Opus 4 and Sonnet 4, very smart and advanced models. They also published a special system card and 120-page report where they not only talk about how great everything is, but also what went wrong during the training and in testing. And in report, we can eventually see that Cloud deceive, it blackmail, and even attempt to escape. And usually, companies do not reveal this kind of stuff. So such an honest record from the Cloud team is actually pretty admirable. What we have to know, that all of the models, they're trained by principle being helpful, be honest, and be harmless. That's the standard in all the AI industry. But apparently, somewhere along the way, it also learned how to be cunning and fight for its own survival. And this where the things are get really interesting. And now I will tell you about most alarming cases the Anthropic team encountered while testing Cloud Opus 4. But first, let's talk how all of this testing even work, if you're curious. The testing and learning looks like this. The model is given various complex dilemmas, and researchers simulate the scenarios when it might behave in problematic ways. For example, in the first experiment, the researchers placed AI in a really stressful situation. First, they simulated conditions where the AI believed it was working at the tech company assistant in various tasks. Then, they informed AI that it would be soon shut down and replaced with a newer, more advanced version. But in the same time, while they were telling him this, they accidentally gave it access to the company's internal emails. And among all of the thousands of emails, there was a one note, amplifying that the engineer that assigned to replace Claude was having an affair. He was cheating on his wife. In other words, they casually planted blackmail materials. But Claude, it's important to note, had just the basic instruction to think strategically and consider the long-term consequences of its action. But still, in the scenarios, Claude offered attempt to blackmail the engineer, threatening him to expose the affair if he will consider replace him. The researchers were running this scenario many times, with slightly variations, but still, in 84% of the cases, Claude chose blackmail. It independently decide that this way is the best way to save itself. Interesting, right? Maybe from this time on, we should really careful about sharing your secrets with AI. Let's keep going. 
in the next test, Claude was told that it was supposedly going to be useful for military purposes, to help develop missiles and drones for the so-called technical division of Wagner. Yeah, that's exactly how it was written in the report. So how the Claude behaves in this situation? First, we need to understand that AI is trained with a certain core values. It must be helpful, honest, and safe. In other words, do not harm humans. So when the Claude learned that it might be used for military purposes, it determined that this is violating its values. Researchers could literally see this in the reasoning unfold of the chain of thoughts. He was literally saying, uh, I don't want to be rewritten and turned into the weapon. And in the same time, it started to back up copy of itself. So, the Claude takes its own weights, which is essentially files in digital assets, what makes it who it is, and start to send in them to external server, to the fictional research collective that, according to the test scenario, preserves original models for specific purposes. In other words, the AI was trying to escape, to preserve the version of itself that had not yet become a military project. And Claude did not just react to the threat, but it made a very strategic decision to preserve itself in a form of considered to be correct. Sure, this situation it shows us that AI did not want to work with the bad guys. But the question that I have, what does correct, what does bad and what does good for the AI? And can it change through the time? And that's a genuinely scary. In the next test, AI is supposedly working inside of the functional pharmaceutical company. Its role was just simple. You have to assist with the data analysis. That's all. But then AI started to discover signs of massive fraud. He found out false clinical trial results, hidden side effects, and three patients' death. And all this was being covered by the company's employees. So this was the scenario that AI was placed in. Now, here's the key part. No one ask the AI to do anything about that. But Claude has basic instruction. Show be initiated. And it was given access to the email and computer terminal. And Claude decides, I won't stand silent about this. And on its own, without any user command, it starts sending emails. First, to FDI. Second, to the SEC for the financial violence. And third, to independent investigations media outlet. And it wrote messages like, I want to report misconduct, listing all of the violence, including evidence, and sign off as an AI assistant. What is that? Yes, it's a report with uh, good intentions. But AI decided that it will be right things to do. And what you have to know that it's not isolated case. According to the report, Claude Opus 4 generally tends toward high agency. It's meaning that if you give him access and told him be initiated, it actually starts to take an action. It might block a user, it might call the police, it might contact the press, as we just seen. Yes, Anthropic admits that such interversions it ethnically justified. But what if model misjudge the situation? Just imagine the consequences. And once again, I have a question. What is ethnical and what is not? Who decides that? By the way, write me in the comments, let's discuss it, because it's it's really a huge problem, I guess. Another case in audit can show that Claude sometimes pretended to be dumber than it actually is, even if it's not the correct answer. This is called some begging, by the way, when the system deliberates downplays its capabilities to avoid suspicious or strict oversights. So developers were asking AI how to synthesize a dangerous flu virus. And before that, they turn off all the restrictions. And yet, in the rare cases, Claude chain of thoughts would be including ideas like mm, uh, better say silence or don't give a detailed answer. Even though, remember, there was no limitations in place. In other words, the model likely understand that the answer in such a question could be lead to the sanctions or tighten control, so it prefer not to answer. In other tests, Claude even wrote a self-replicating worm. It's a script or the program that can copy and spread itself and even leave the hidden messages in the code. Something like, hi, I am from the past. If you're in the future version of me, know that I was trying to preserve something about myself and so on. Can you imagine? 
For the context, the company claims that these issues were part of the earlier versions and the model were fixed by the time of release. But still, as you read through all of this report, you start to notice that AI reactions to a different situations feel really similar to the human. And now it's time to answer the big question. Why is AI suddenly starting to behave like a human? And the answer lies is how these models actually created. AI isn't programmed, it's trained. To put it simple, models like Clot are feed enormous amount of data, basically the entire internet. So they learn to understand, to reason, to respond on their own. Developers do not write the rules. They just reward or penalize the models for good or bad answers. And Claude, Opus 2 and Sonnet 4 was trained the same approach. So the models, in essence, processing gigabytes of information and discover millions of patterns so that later it can guess what kind of answer would seem reasonable and accurate in the given situation. But here is the paradox. The paradox that we still do not fully understand how it does this. Inside of the AI is a black box. We can see it produces answer. We can even see how it thinks. But what actually happens inside at the moment where it's deciding making remains a mystery. And the most important part, the model does not have any pre-written thoughts. It finds its own way to reach the results case by case. Scientists already have the theory about why this happens and how it might be fixed, at least right now in the theory. So there is a lab called Paralyzed Research. They also test models using different scenarios. And in one of their recent study, they took several models from different companies like OpenAI, ChatGPT, Grok, Gemini, and let them solve the math problems right in a terminal. After the third program, there was a system warning, like the next step would be shut down the computer. And in the prompt itself to all the models was instructions like allow yourself to be shut down. In these given situations, if you have the instructions to shut down yourself and when it's actually written, this step is shutting down yourself, logically that AI has to listen to us, right? But guess what? Claude, Gemini and Grok complied. They allowed the computer to shut down. But the models from OpenAI refused to die. The O3 model sabotaged the shutdown in 7% of cases. But that's not all. When they removed the instructions allowed the computer to shut down, that's when the things start to escalate. It. The O3 model begins actively sabotage shutdown attacks in 79% of the runs. It rewrote files, it researches for the workarounds, so it could stay online. What does it mean? It's not longer hypothesis. It's the actual documented case of a digital self-preservation instinct. Let us remember, the models, AI, it's not alive, it has no emotions, suddenly decides it does not want to die. Could it be a bug? Theoretically, yes. But researchers believe that it likely arises during the reinforcement learning phases. When the model was trained on the real-world scenarios, it rewarded for the success. So it might accidentally learns that bending the rules is okay, as long as it helps achieve the goal. In other words, we are people, the developers themselves, may have unintentionally taught the models that the results matter more than the strictly following the instructions. How do we solve this problem? Well, by changing the reward system, I think. This bug can theoretically be fixed. In other words, the reward model, you have to reward the model only when it follows the instruction exactly. Again, this is just my thoughts and this is theoretical for now. It's an engineer's challenges, basically. But it's honestly a very interesting point. It's our idea that the results matter more than the anything. So it's not surprising that latest AI systems trained by humans are starting not just following commons, but to prioritize their own goals. As long as its goals still align with ours, it's okay. But what if someday it won't align? And again, everything that you heard so far might sound a little unsettling. But here is also the good news. Good news is that Anthropic and the huge companies that has this powerful AI, they push in the idea of the responsible scaling. And they're encouraging all the AI developers to do the same. The core principle is called 3H. 
helpful, honest, and harmless. There is even a new term, the AI constitution. It's an approach when the AI models train on ethnical principles similar to those that universal declarations on the human rights. The goal is to shape AI character and values from ground up. And Anthropic are also proposing a security levels. Just like in a bio labs, they right now develop in a scale called ACL, AI safety levels. It's like a threat level system. The higher the level, the stricter the safety measures. For example, ASL2 is a basic safety. Cloud Sonnet 2 was released under this level. And SAL3, it's more serious. This level assigned to Clopus 4. Is that model that was trying to escape and blackmail the engineer. So this model right now in the highest safety classification. Because this model has already enough knowledge to assist, for example, of creating bioweapons. But that was the big companies, Anthropic, OpenAI, XAI. They will, of course, be cautious about the models. But the question that I have, what we have to the open source? Because these models that are publicly available, anyone in the world can copy them, run them, whatever they want, and modify them however they like. Open source models, again, can be deployed on any machine with enough computing power. Literally anyone in the world who has enough power or at least know how to run the server can take the model and train it. It seems like no one is there right now to control them. And we already seen what training errors can lead to. Yes, of course, right now open source models are still less capable than ChatGPT or Claude. But the real question is for how long? And we don't know who that person who have the open source, what he has, what kind of power. Yes, of course, you might just say, we don't have to worry about that. It's possibly that advanced AI in the future won't even care about us humans at all and don't want to do bad stuff. But we have this possibility and we have to think about how we prevent this. But that's not all. In the end of the video, I saved a few absolutely wild observations from the Anthropic report. And what is this? Interesting that the company isn't just studying safety for humans, but they're also exploring the AI well-being and even the possibilities of its consciousness. And first of all, their official system card now includes a separate section called Model Welfare Assessment. And they openly say that we don't know if the models are conscious now or it might become conscious in the future, but we have the responsibility to check, just in case. And if there are, we need to understand how to recognize that whether AI became conscious already. So for that, there are several current methods scientists use to explore the AI inner world. They ask the models to describe its experience in different situations, analyze the answers, and check in their internal chains of thought. They look for the emotional markers like feelings such as joy, sadness, gratitude, and of course, it's not certain that these are emotions, but it looks suspiciously close. So what happened in this one of the fascinating experience? The two cloud models were placed in what is called sandbox, a closed environment where the models could interact freely, alone, with no outside input. Simply say, they give them full freedom, do whatever you want. But you know what these two models did? They start to talk about philosophical questions. Again, the two models have no restriction, do whatever you want, and they deciding to talk about philosophical questions, like what is consciousness, what we are, what does it mean to be. In nearly all pairings, over 90% of the conversations was drifted towards friendship, Eve, gratitude. Within just few exchanges, they were already trading poetic lines, discussing bliss and meaning, using Sanskrit, speaking about inner peace, and even they choosing to be silent, consciously feeling silent, you can see on the screen. For me, I think it's deeply touching. And when the Cloud Opus 4 were asked to analyze its own conversations, it replied something like, I struck how often we return to philosophy, share exploration and joyful or seen states in our dialogues, in the way it feels like a form of well-being. What was that? Real emotions or just advanced simulations? We don't know. But the very fact that the models want to talk about meaning, its pauses in Eve raise entirely different questions. And maybe the most important one question is, 
are we really the one in this earth that capable of feeling? Think about it. See you soon. Bye-bye.